This week on Fitech Tech Tuesday, we're going to go over the initial setup of an Ultimate LS system. We're going to go over everything that you need to plug into the handheld to get the vehicle running down the road for the first time. So now that we have the LS system hooked up and set up on our LS engine, we're going to go and key on for the first time. One of the things that I would recommend doing when keying on is we'll have a fuel pump cycle. This is a good opportunity to check your fuel pressure, make sure that the fuel system is building pressure, and then check for fuel leaks. Because we are going to eventually crank the engine, so we want to make sure there's no leaks present. But once we got the key in the on position, we're going to go onto our handheld, and we could do one of two things. You can go to initial setup, but what I always recommend doing is going down to the bottom to right cal to ECU. And we're gonna just see if one of these setups will get us close to begin with. So there's a list of defaults of preloaded calibrations in the handheld that make it you started pretty quickly. So the motor that we're using is a 5.3 liter 24 tooth reluctor engine. And we have it tied to a 4L60E transmission. And by chance, we also are using the 39 pound injectors. So that first default is exactly the file that we want to load. So we'll just select the file that we want. The first one's perfect for us. So we'll select load. Once the load is finished, then we can jump over to our initial setup. Half the stuff will be preset for us and then we just have to finish up the other half of it. All right, so now that that file is loaded, we're gonna go into initial setup and then engine setup. Engine setup has our injectors put in already. We have our cubic inch already put in for us. The cam selection. This car has a little bit more aggressive cam than stock, so we're gonna go to cam two. and we're gonna hit send to ECU. We have our rev limit. I'm gonna leave that at 6,000 RPM, and then our idle speed warm is 650 in here. I'm gonna lower that just a little bit to 600. Then our crank selection already input for us, and I'm not running a supercharger on here or turbos, so I'm gonna leave the supercharged or naturally aspirated on naturally aspirated. So now that everything's set up, and there, I'm gonna go and set up some of my other stuff. So fans and AC setup, I get to choose when I want to turn on and off my electric fans. So fan one, enable, disable. So if you're not using it, you can disable it. The coolant temperatures that it turns on and off look good for me. Um, fan two, you can enable or disable. And then if you have air conditioning, which this car doesn't, you can enable or disable the AC option. In this case, it doesn't, so I'm gonna disable it. But if you wanted to turn on an electric fan, fan one, when the AC turns on, you can choose to do so if you wanted to. And that's where we would set it there. So now we're gonna back out. Since we got a 4L60, we're gonna to go to our gear selection on the automatic transmissions. We're running a 26 inch diameter tire already. The rear end is a 273, so we're gonna leave that. We have our rev limit set to 6,000 RPM. I'm also gonna have my force upshift set up pretty high, but I want it to be something slightly lower so I could exceed um, this point for it to shift to the next gear if required. Next up is our transmission, 4LXOE. This is the on-off switch of the, of the trans control. So to turn it on, I would select 4LXOE hit send to ECU. The next one is your 4L6XE or 4L8XE. So if you're running a 4L60, 65, or a 4L70, you're gonna select the 4L6XE. And if you're running a 4L80, you'll put on 4L80. And then again, if you're not running any of those transmissions to turn off the feature, 4LXOE just goes to other. Next up, we have shift RPM reset. We haven't done anything, so it's off, so it's not doing anything. 
shift RPM learn, we're gonna let it learn. And lastly, the brake input for torque converter clutch. This vehicle doesn't have the brake wire hooked up off of the Ultimate LS harness, so we're gonna change it to no brake. If you were to have that brake switch, you would need a brake switch signal that would send to the ECU 12 volts constant, zero volts when the brake is applied. So once we get this menu set up, we'll jump back. We don't need to mess with the manual transmission because we're running the automatic. And then we got tack and speedo. So if you wanted to turn on the tack and speedo selections from the EFI system to power a digital dash or a, any type of digital display, you can choose to do so. So speedo from Cal and tack from Cal would both need to be turned on. And then the speedo correction and speedo to VSS count is how we modify the signal output so the speed reads correctly on the speedometer. For the tachometer, we have the same options here to, to adjust it, but then there's also a four-cylinder GM tack. So if you're using a later model GM tack and you're noticing that the RPMs are like half speed, you can go in here and turn on or off the four-cylinder mode because the GM tacks use that signal. So in this case, we're running aftermarket gauges, so it's not gonna have that. So we're gonna set that to the ECU, and then we're gonna go back. Next up is our dual wideband. I have two banks. I have both O2 sensors hooked up, so I'm running dual. If you have a single O2, you would switch it to single. Next up is the knock control. If you're running knock sensors, there's a lot of adjustments in here. But the most important thing is, whether you're using them or not, enable or disable. And then down here near the bottom, we have flat resonance, uh, flat or resonant knock sensors. So it's marked LS3 or LS1. Uh, LS1 would be more in line of the 24-tooth Reluctor truck 5.3 liter that I have in here. So the LS1 is the one we're gonna select. If you have LS3 side of the block, knock sensors, you're gonna select the LS3 version. So that's the next setting. And then final, off of that, you have your nitrous control, which would disable the AC, so we can skip past that. The reset learn is if later on we wanna reset the learn. And then break points, we don't have to adjust, but this would adjust where certain points in the software it would uh, adjust to another cell. So we do not need to mess with that either. So once we get that all set up, we'll jump back, go into the dashboard and key off. I'm gonna wait for this value column to disappear and that will tell me that the system is completely saved. Once the system's completely saved, we can key back on. I would recommend going around the engine again, check for fuel leaks one more time. But at this point, we are ready to start the engine and then we would go back into the initial setup, get the engine up to temperature, and we would go through the idle setup section, which would be the same as video number 61 on our Tech Tuesdays. So you could choose how to set the throttle, but then we also do have our adjustments for your park idle RPM warm and in-gear idle RPM warm. So those are just additional adjustments that you can make when that time comes. But now that we got it on, we'll crank the engine and see how she runs. And that's it, as easy as that. So this concludes everything that you need to do through the handheld to set up the Ultimate LS system. From here you would want to start up the vehicle, warm it up, and do your throttle adjustment. If you visit episode number 61 for LS throttle adjustment, that would be your next step. From there, you're ready to run your vehicle down the road. I hope that answers any questions that you have with setting up the system. If you have any other questions, please comment them down below or visit our website at fitechefi.com for additional videos.